Okay, so what do I have here? This is a round tabletop. Now this is interesting because what it's made out of flooring. And I started this project a couple of years ago. It's just been sitting there waiting for me. And I honestly kind of forgot about it. Uh, but recently I was thinking, I really need a little table. I should build one. Wait a minute, I have this thing sitting. You know, I should finish that. So let's rewind a little bit, shall we? So a couple of years back, we picked up a bunch of utility grade white oak flooring. And if you've watched any of my videos in the past, you might recognize it because I use it for a bunch of things. Flooring, yes, but also countertop surface, tabletop. And when you think about it, using solid hardwood flooring material for projects make a lot of sense because you already have the tongues and grooves, right? So all you need to do is assemble, glue up. So here we have a small panel. Now, it's square, right? And I want it to be round. So let's make a basic jig. And for that, we need a router and a bit and a piece of plywood. Okay, to make it, it's pretty simple. First step, find the center of your wood and drill a hole on the underside. Not all the way through. You don't want to mess up that nice wood surface. Just go through a little bit. Then we have a piece of plywood that measures about the radius of your circle. And on one end, we have a router connected and then we've secured the other side to the hole in the piece of wood. Important that we cut this from the bottom of the board, right? Unless we want that hole in the center of the table. And then we go round a couple of passes. Lowering the bid each time a little more until we've cut all the way through. It's kind of fun doing this and so practical that you get a perfect circle without doing any measuring or anything. I remember when I first started using the router, um, I was really tempted to uh, bring the bit down and like do it all the first time round, but that's not really a good idea. And it just makes me think about how like when you do the CNC, when you cut things with the CNC, I mean, you also go through the wood a bunch of times with the same bit. You don't do it in one sweep because most likely the bit will break. I mean, it won't be safe and uh, it's just not a good idea. Um, but anyway, we're left with a perfect, beautiful round circle. It's kind of cool because all you need is one of these routers for this. And then depending on your plywood, you can cut a circle any size. Of course, this kind of stuff happens sometimes. This wood is utility grade, which means some pieces are kind of rough. Uh, so you have to sort a little bit, but you know, nothing that some glue and some sanding can't fix. Then I rounded the edges with a round over bit. Um, I also filled in some imperfections with epoxy and sanded it slightly. Oh yeah, and if you see any blue kind of tones in the board here, it's because I was thinking that it'd be cool at that point in time to have some like blue tints in the epoxy. And I was kind of thinking that there would be more like larger imperfections, but it turned out it was like not a whole lot. So if I were to redo that, I think I'd just skip the blue <laughs> altogether. <laughs> but there you go. And I think now we're back to speed more or less. Um, so let's make some legs. And I think we should design something nice and cut them out on the CNC. So let's go into Aspire by Vectric and design some legs. Now we're making something round, right? So using the rotary on the CNC and making a cylinder. So let's make the legs 19 inches long. And first of all, we need a, a round smaller section that will go through the leg. And then we can kind of play with making some curves for the rest of the design here. I don't want anything too extravagant, just some gentle sloping curves where it narrows towards um, the ends or the bottoms. So it almost looks like a rather thin baseball bat, right? Then off to the CNC to cut this out and we're left with these beauties. We have one, two, three, four. Look how gorgeous they are. So this is cut out of maple, slight curve down. Um, and just kind of slightly bigger here, a bit of kind of movement, but not too much, but there's a little variation in it. It's not just a straight taper, it has a little bit of a movement there. So first up, I want to cut off this part here and this part here, and then attach them to the tabletop. Let's get, um, let's get a saw and let's get the bench hook. Perhaps the most useful 
successful tour of them all. While I'm cutting here, I was just thinking about how there are several ways to attach legs to a tabletop, right? Of course, it depends what kind of legs you have. Uh, but when I go through the options in my mind, I think, okay, you can add rails first underneath the table and then attach the legs to those. That is how most of the tables in my house are constructed. Then, of course, there are certain legs that are almost like brackets where you can screw them on the underside. Then you have hardware plates where you can secure a special screw to the leg and then screw the leg into the hardware plate. But then we have perhaps the least common method of them all, which is what I want to do now. And that is having the leg go through the tabletop all the way. be a lot easier to uh, sand these now before they are on the table. So what I was thinking in terms of attaching these to the table is I want to drill four holes in the table all the way through at a slight angle, maybe like five degrees or something like that. And that way the legs will come all the way through the top and they'll protrude just a little bit and then, you know, I can clean that up later. And that way, you know, it'll be just very slight angle of four of them. But I rather like when it comes all the way through the top, so you can see that. Okay, now to create, um, to drill this hole in the top at a slight like angle, I want to make a guide first. Five degree angle right there. So you want to go at a slight angle here. Drilling at the perfect angle is not my strong suit. <laughs> so let's try to create a good guide. Um, of course, we have to drill at the right angle in order to create the guide. So let's see. Let's try to go straight down that line. I think that looks pretty good. Let's see how we are in this direction. Not bad. Is that good? Pretty good. Now when we have such a beautiful guide, <laughs> this should be pretty easy, right? So what we want to do now um, is measure out where exactly we want these holes, right? So we're going to start cutting from the top so we don't get any breakout, you know, like from the bottom, because you won't be able to see the bottom anyway. Actually, the bottom of this, um, it looks like the bottom of the floor, but nobody really sees the bottom anyway. But, um, so we have four legs, right? So we want uh, four corners. Let's think about how far, how far away we want three inches in, maybe? Something like that, it's pretty good. So first of all, let's find where our center is here. If that's my center, three inches from the side, it's right there. We are going like this. Three inches right there. X there, X there, X there. Now we just have to make sure we do the right angle. First of all, let's get this up a little bit so we don't drill into the bench. Which of course we want to uh, get in the right position, right? We want it to, to put, be outwards towards the outside. No, we don't! <laughs> that would be the case if this was upside down. But no, we want it to go from we want to go towards the inside since the legs are going to come out this way. Don't you think things like this are sometimes nerve-wracking? Okay, so I have this beautiful top now and I'm about to make these cuts and if I screw it up, I screw it up and you know, you really have to start from the beginning. Especially if you, if you cut the wrong angle. I mean, that would just be really, really bad. Because basically, we want the legs to go down that way. <laughs> 
we're gonna go ah an oak is hard to drill through Whew, and it smells a lot I think that turned out pretty good at least it's too late to do anything about it now right now we just have three more legs or holes to drill the thing when you're doing this like you're using the guide initially so when you go down you know you feel the guide and the angle but once you come down further you don't have that kind of support anymore because you know with the Forstner bit it's only that thick part that is actually touching the guide and you're no longer touching that guide once you come further down so um although i think it looks it looks pretty good of course the other thing when you're using a guide out of wood like this the more you use the guide the more you're kind of eating the guide up so it becomes a little bit less precise as you move along So we got our holes, um, now we're going to glue in from the back underside, put one in after the other. I think it is rather sleek and elegant, like very simple in a good way, you know? So I added a little bit of glue mixed with sawdust in some areas that were a little bit, uh, a little bit loose, but it, it dried beautifully. We have a next day, it's been sitting overnight. So I'm just gonna cut this. Don't you just love white oak? pretty close here but let's get a chisel and kind of clean it up a little more It's funny, I'm just looking at some of these like blue spots and uh, yeah, if I could remove the blue, I think. I mean, it's not super visible. Um, and when I was first gluing this together, I was thinking, oh, there's quite a lot of like spots to fill. So that it would be kind of cool to have this blue. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> in terms of this uh, flooring material though, I mean, we have the floorboards in the big shop, in my little studio, in the playhouse. I have this as a counter in the workshop. I have it tool cart counter there. We use this white oak tongue and groove, like these boards for frames, like for blackboards, um, and just like for a lot of things. So that was a, a pretty good uh, purchase. And considering we still have quite a lot left, I mean, I think I'm gonna continue making projects with it. I also think these kinds of tables are so useful because you can so easily move them from room to room if you need like an outdoor table for a, a specific time. Um, we have a, a similar table to this in there as well. That is really great. It's a little bit lower. I wanted this one to be a little bit higher. I've been sanding, it's nice and smooth. Now let's uh, let's finish it. So first of all, let's clean it off with some mineral spirits, get this sand off everywhere. Or sand, sawdust. <laughs> start with the bottom shall we I mean even though nobody's going to look at the bottom and the bottom is really not that nice looking you still want to seal the wood in everywhere right you don't want to left it leave it unsealed in any one area this is water-based poly really I preferred oil based but this is what I have on hand right now so this is what I'm going to use and let's first wet the brush that way it'll be a lot easier to clean the brush later I'm getting pretty good at taking care of my brushes. This brush I think I've used for a good year now. Of course the nice thing with a water base like this is that it dries quickly. You can do a couple coats. But then of course 
the thing I don't like as much is that it doesn't give that really kind of oily like finish. Um, however, that's when we have wax polish, right? So we can put wax polish on the table and kind of create that really smooth, richer feel, which is what, what I prefer. Last year I introduced a new product to the shop, this wax pot, which is like a little wooden box with a lid that's filled with wax polish. This one's filled with uh, mineral oil wax polish because we have three different kinds of wax polish. Um, anyway, so made a whole bunch of wax pots last year and sold them in time for Christmas. And so this year I'm kind of making a new batch of them. Um, but I'm also including some different kinds of woods. So a uh, different variety of woods because this is maple, my, one of my favorite woods, like the legs are maple. Uh, but adding some more varieties. So this is what the underside of the table looks like. I mean because it is flooring and I suppose if you were really crazy <laughs> you could have a sand of this or uh, I really don't care it's the underside so it doesn't matter to me but I still want to, uh, to finish it to make sure that the wood is protected all through. Okay let's turn this around. So it's a little rough right now, you know, when you do water-based finish, it raises the grain a little bit. So I'll just do a light sanding and then we'll do another coat. So if everything is not perfectly square, which in this situation, I mean, it's not. So, you know, you can have a little bit of a little bit of a wobble, right? Well, easy enough to fix if you have one of those little, you know, you can buy these little things to put under the, the legs. Well, I don't really have any of those. So I'm just, I got some felt right here. So I'm just making my own, which is easy enough. So here's like a, a little felt one. I'm just gonna secure this with a hot glue. Um, and then I can double it up wherever it's needed. So on this side here, it needs to be doubled up. So of course this kind of stuff is always nice in general on any tables or chairs so you don't scraping the floor, right? And then we'll put our leg. Okay, so now we have smooth, even surface. And it's a lot easier than trying to, you know, sand one leg a little bit or whatever. Kind of funny how hot glue I think is such a useful tool you know you never know when you're gonna need some hot glue and the thing that I've learned about hot glue is that surprisingly strong um, for quite some time however like you know over the years may become a little brittle and break so it's not like something you would really want to rely on structurally for a long time but short term like within a year or for something like this I mean this is absolutely perfect Okay, we have one last step now to do here, and that is to add some wax polish. This is our tongue oil beeswax polish, and it's what I use on all my tabletops, anything, I don't know, nicer. It cures a little bit harder. It just has a different smell from linseed oil wax polish. So this tin here I haven't used in a little while, and this is a good example of what happens, especially with tongue oil polish, when it... It cures. I mean, that's what happens. The, the, the oil has cured, which is exactly what you want to see, because that means that that's going to happen on your table top as well, right? Uh, so what you can just do is peel that off, or you can kind of incorporate it into it if you want. doesn't really matter, but what's under is like the really good stuff. I'm going to add some fine steel wool when I apply the wax polish, and that will just smoothen out any little bumps or imperfections even more and create that super, super smooth surface. Okay, and then after it, you know, let it sit for a minute, I'll just wipe off the excess. But the top here right now is super, super smooth. Um, you can really feel the difference if you touch the legs. The legs have had two coats of finish and the top has had three coats of finish and then of course wax polish. But it's a completely different feel. I mean, this feels kind of matte, slightly like very rich. Yeah, this was kind of a fun project. I'm really glad to get this out of here and make it something useful because, you know, I hate projects that just sit around. It's much better if things are being used, right? So thanks so much for watching, guys. Let me know if you have any questions. 
Um, if you want to support the channel, I have a Patreon. If you want to pick up a wax polish or something like that, um, it's at darbenover.com. I'll put links to everything in the description below. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys soon. Also, it's kind of interesting to note that this floor, <laughs> shop floor, is the same wood. Exactly. And so what the difference here is just really finish, right? And like sanding. This is looking a little rough at the moment. <laughs> could use a good cleaning and maybe a refinish, but I don't care because it's a shop floor. But kind of interesting to note the difference. Also, the other interesting part about like this flooring is that there's so many, um, you know, very visually interesting looking pieces. Yeah. And here we got the legs popping through. Thing. What about a smooth, a very smooth?